All right, we just spent the night at the legendary Nullarbor Roadhouse. Mm -hmm. Well, two nights, I guess. Two nights. So the last footage I think I shot was when we were at uh, the Bundek Lifts mm -hmm. and it was pouring with rain <laughs> and the wind was howling. So because of that, we decided we didn't want to camp out in the rain. We wanted to like power on and just go to the Nullarbor Roadhouse in one go. So 116 miles later, we get there <laughs> and it's closed. <laughs> So we ended up setting up our tent in the rain and the being all soggy and it was pretty miserable. And I lost my golf club because I was so exhausted. I have no idea where it is. Yeah. So there's another thing, the golf club that Bonnie's dragged here all the way from Norseman, she's now lost. So I'll have to play hacky sack basically with yeah. the golf ball at all the holes. Yeah, you can there. just kick it. Yeah, I'll just kick right. it, it'll yeah. be fine. <laughs> okay, so anyway, um, we decided to take a rest day after that. So we just hung around at the Nullarbor Roadhouse all day, just chilled out rested, caught up with some stuff online and everything. And um, yeah, we just left and now we're on our way to the head of the bite whale center. Okay. Um, apparently they've seen about 50 humpback whales today. That's awesome. Yeah, so we saw some the other day, but mm -hmm. hopefully we're gonna see them a bit more up close today. Can't wait. Let's go. Shall we? Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we conquered another pilgrimage spot on the Nullarbor. We finally made it to the head of the bite, the best place to go whale watching. And sure enough, we arrived there early this afternoon and we saw lots of whales. It was so amazing. Um, neither of us have seen whales in the wild before. Uh, especially that close up. It was great. Uh, from May to September every year, uh, uh, right whales specifically, they like to come to the southern coast of Australia to, uh, nurse, um, to nurse their calves and just relax in the warmer waters. And so that's what we saw today. We saw lots of right whale mothers and their babies just sort of rolling in the waves. A couple of them lifted up their, uh, their fins and slapped the water. It was amazing. Such a cool experience. Uh, whoever said the Nullarbor is boring has no idea what they're talking about because we have found it to be quite entertaining. And now we are just leaving the eastern end of the treeless plain. We're gonna be wild camping today. And I think uh, tomorrow we'll be reaching Yalata, which is a 
um, Aboriginal town site, and then after that, Nundrew. And then we'll, uh, I think it's, yeah, it's two more roadhouses after that. Um, and we'll be in Seduna and the end of the Nellabore. So it's been quite the adventure. All right, good morning. It seems that um, last night's camp worked out pretty well. About half an hour after we got here and got the tent set up, um, a guy pulls up, asks where we're going, um, and then proceeds to ask us if we wanted some beers. So his name was Jeremy. <laughs> Give us some beers. So his name was Jeremy, and he's moving from the East Coast to the West Coast. And he found out to move his boat, he's a keen fisherman, um, it was going to cost him eight grand, so he decided to just tow it himself. So he'd been like, I think he'd been driving for like 10 hours or something like that, and he just wanted someone to talk to and to chill for five minutes. So we invited him over, we chatted about the road, and yeah, I think we picked a pretty awesome spot to camp, all things considered. Walked away with basically five beers each. Yeah, road magic. So we were told in the Nullarbor guide that there was a rainwater tank here, but no such luck. So either it's a bit further on, we'll keep on looking for it, or we're just going to have to wait till we get to Yalata to, and refill there. Um, I think there's a police station, maybe they can uh, give us some advice. We're not too desperate anyway, so we'll be alright. Okay, ready? <laughs> Okay, we're just coming up to the Aboriginal community Yalata. We're hoping maybe we can find some water here. Okay, it doesn't really look like there's much here. Um, the old roadhouse is all boarded up and um, yeah. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna find what we're after here. So I guess we're just gonna push on. We really are reaching the end of the Nullarbor now. Everything's becoming green, there's trees, there's wildlife. Yeah, that sign wasn't joking when it said we reached the end of the treeless plain. Okay, so we just left Nundru Roadhouse. Um, pretty decent burger, but other than that, it was pretty forgettable. Uh, we filled up our water bottles. Bonnie's complaining that it tastes kind of salty. Probably not a good thing. Uh, anyway, we're gonna push on. Maybe we'll get near Scottesco by tonight. Uh, which is where there's a giant wombat. We're having a real hard time finding somewhere to camp ever since we left Nundra. Um We just found this area, like just off the road, but it's, when I say just off the road, I mean just off the road and it's really rough scrub. Um, we kind of considered it, we had to look around, but we think we're gonna keep on going and keep searching for now. Okay, so I'm glad we passed on that last crappy campsite because we found a really good one. Um, like just like a couple of miles down the road there was a sign for a parking like I don't know I guess like a parking spot a rest area but like we're finding a lot of these rest areas that we come across there's like the little lay-by bit that they were originally designed with and then there's all these paths just going off into the woods where people have made their own paths and found places to camp and there's evidence of campfires everywhere and anyway it's nice and sheltered and um, we've been listening to some tunes Bonnie setting up the tent um, the day has turned around quite nicely. 
One of the issues that we've been facing on this trip is finding the right kind of gas for our stove. So anyway, we've managed to find this brand of gas designed for, I think like portable like blow torches or something. It's some sort of tradey gas, but it has a screw fitting to fit the stove. Unfortunately, it's also like really tall and when you stick a pan on it, it's gonna fall over. So we've started actually burying it. I kind of feel like maybe this is unsafe, but um, anyway, we've, uh, <laughs> we've managed to create ourselves a little windshield here from a piece of scrap metal we found near the campsite. And uh, we've got ourselves a nice little cook station.